Drummers, have I got a special one for you. I just did a consult with an incredible drummer, and we were talking about drum throne mechanics. And he was asking, well, how much weight should be on my feet, one foot to the other versus my hips? And when we talked about this flat round top throne, and we took some scales, very simple scales, that you can get at Walmart. It helped us come up with some very interesting information. So let's check this out. Here's the Coles notes very quickly leading into this. If you are a drummer and your back and hip or anywhere is ever struggling with sensation that you don't like, there are some very basic ergonomic things that you can make changes that can be revolutionary. If your ergonomics are 100% dialed in, the very next step is making sure that you have the physical endurance and strength to tolerate the amount of time that you're going to be going through an excursion. If you have to perform two-hour gigs every day, every night, how do we together make sure you have 14 hours of endurance in that hip muscle and that way you don't experience fatigue? In most cases, especially from the muscular tension side of things, People will say that you get tight and tense and you need to stretch it, and this is very true. But your body doesn't have a tendency to just throw down tension for no really reason at all. It's never unsolicited. It's usually because of a stressor or your body tightens things up to protect something. Or in a lot of cases I see is that the actual tension is truly just fatigue. And if you think of it this way, you're doing bicep curls, you do 20 of them and your arms get tired. Well, what if I said you have to do 1,000 because your gig depends on it? This is how a lot of things are. Imagine you're a four in the floor drummer and you're stomping your foot for a two hour, three hour gig or even just 40 minutes and you're having to hit the same note, same tempo, same force time and time again. There's a physical demand of that and there's a tolerance that your tissue has. So the reason why I bring this up is because what we're about to show you is we're gonna get a sense of how much mass your leg on the drum throne you're actually dealing with. And this is imperative because truthfully, what I'm about to show you, this actually carries on to if you're a podcast or office worker, you can use this anywhere. But because we're drummers, this is way cooler. So uh, check out this neat thing that I discovered. When you're sitting on your drum throne, here's a hack to make sure that you are in the most perfect position possible. You want to make sure that the majority of your center of mass of your torso is right over the middle of the seat. How you can check this if you want to kind of get a bit scientific with this is kind of create your own inexpensive foot plate dynamometer. What I have below my feet here positioned right in front of my pedals of this pretty small rinky dink love custom drums drum set is I have two scales that I got from Walmart for about $10 each. They're analog scales, nothing special whatsoever. And as you can see here, uh, pretty simple and pretty useful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place the scales, placing the scales right in front of each pedal exactly where I would sit. And what's important is that I'm 190 pounds as I sit today. When I put my feet down on the scales, what I want to see and what should happen is I should have a very low amount of weight going through my feet. My leg does have mass and weight, so there's going to be some number on the scales, but I want to see this number be relatively low and be the same from one side to the other. If they're not same from the one side to the other, we have an inherent problem with where our pedal position is and where we're putting our weight on our throne. So if I'm sitting here and I do my best to not shift my weight too much, I'm putting approximately 22 pounds in my right leg and my left leg, which is great. As you can see, if I move my feet forward directly towards the pedal, I would have that exact same 22 pounds on the right and 22 pounds on the left. What gets very interesting, and this came up when I was doing a consult with a, another professional drummer that I thought was very interesting, is that as soon as this particular drummer would lift up one leg, he would shift his entire body weight over, and his comments was that as he would do that, his back and his hip would feel some discomfort. So here's the next step of the exercise, is once you're here, can you stay tall with your torso and lift your leg up with the least amount of weight shift? Now, I've done this exercise a bunch of times before, but if I do this, I lift my leg up and I don't move, I go from 22 pounds on my left leg to now 32 pounds. So there's a 10 pound shift over to the left side. And if I lift my left leg, approximately the same thing. Now that's very common because as I lift one leg up, my center of mass has to shift to my base of support, which is gonna be my glutes, my bum, and the leg that's left on the ground. What's important about this exercise though, and this assessment I should say rather, is that if you're sitting here and you lift your leg up and lift your leg up, I should have some range of motion left and I shouldn't see a dramatic shift forward. 
If you do this and you're watching your side view like you are here with me and I do this and you see your background or you have to modify your body position to accommodate, then you're going to have a major problem. And this is where I'm a gigantic fan of flat thrones because other thrones that change the shape uh, that's meeting the, your bottom as you lift one leg, you're going to actually start shifting and there's going to be material that makes it easier for you to shift, which increases the risk. And if you want to know more about that, just let me know. So Cole's notes, two scales, feet down, C. What is your weight distribution? 22 and 22. If I left one leg up, what does it change to? If I lift the other leg up, what does it change to? And that's very interesting because now if you're aware of that, then you can start to actually consider, well, hey, if I'm actually playing, for example, unison strokes on the hi-hat and the bass drum, how much of a shift am I doing? And can you even control lifting up your legs, which is tough. There's some more advanced versions of this, and if you watch this and you've got any questions, you've been struggling with back or hip stuff, comment below. But Cole's notes, buy some inexpensive scales, put your feet down, and uh, check to see from a dynamometer, weight distribution, force perspective, how you're shifting things. Very interesting. I'll tell you what. If you buy these scales and you use this as an assessment, you're going to be very surprised with the information that you discover. And this creates an incredible opportunity for you to play around with where you're sitting on your throne, what throne you purchase. And truthfully, if you're watching this and you're a teacher, an educator, I would encourage you to take these methods and use them. I will tell you today is January 4th, 2023. There is no other drummer doing this right now. So if you see someone else doing this, it came from this guy because this is actually part of our biomechanical assessment we use at my gym strata internal performance. That's not important. That's just kind of funny. Uh, you're going to find this a very powerful tool. And truthfully, every drummer that I have come through my office that we do consults with, we're going to be doing the exact same thing. Because if I'm 190 pounds and I've got 44 pounds of weight going between my two feet, that makes a ton of sense to me that I've got just shy of 150 pounds, right? 75% of my weight ballpark is over top of my hips. That means I'm only lifting 25% of my leg and really only 12.5% between each leg if my numbers are truly accurate. What if you are on the edge of the throne? Well, if you're on the edge of the throne, you're going to be putting significantly more weight going through your feet. And that's going to cause more problems only if you have to consistently lift your leg up and down more for bass drum strokes. How I discovered this for myself was I've been working on quick doubles with my right foot and I realized I was leaning too far forward and I even made a small mistake just from my natural exploration. So... Hope this is useful. If you're new here, please like and subscribe and share this video because truthfully, I want to help drummers like you play longer. And I do believe, shouldn't say believe, I know if you've got a good ergonomical foundation and you have the strength to coincide with the demand of the thing that you like to do, this is how you will be one of those 80 or 100 year old drummers who are still crushing it and you never have to retire. And I mean, do you really want to retire? Because I don't want to ever stop playing. Anyway, this is Brandon from Drum Mechanics and Strata Internal Performance and Fitness Pro Mentors. Thank you so much for watching and... I'll see you real soon.